This week we're talking about form validation and the notes take you through looking at all different ways to create forms that are going to be easier for your users to fill out but also are going to contain data when you're done that is in a form that's it's usable to you. So when you send data to a server and you want to process that then it's going to be in a form that you can use or we hope that you can use that's safe etc. So today what I want to do is I want to take you through and show you some examples of the things that are in the notes. How to pick the most appropriate type of control, how to, to use various attributes to prevent the user from entering data that's incorrect or to try it basically just to guide them toward giving you the kind of data that you want. Um, and I'm going to work my way up toward showing you how to do validation with regular expressions, JavaScript, etc. So I'll let you read through these notes on your own. And what I'm going to do in this series of short videos is I'm going to build I'm going to take you through building this form right here. So I want you to imagine that we're going to build a form. It's for, let's, let's say it's for Seneca students to be able to book an appointment. And so they need to go and fill out a bunch of information, their name, their student ID, email and phone, their address, um, a URL, and they can pick uh, which appointment time they would like and give a description of what the problem is and they could submit this to the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through building this and because we've already done a bunch with forms and bootstrap, I'm not going to build all of it, but I thought I would show you some of the things that are relevant to um, just this particular form. So for example, I want to show you how to do multi-column layouts like this. And also I want to show you how to do things like marking certain fields as required marking things as optional, how we do errors, etc. Uh, so we'll come, we'll go through all these different pieces. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how to do this first name, last name, and student ID. And I've got the form the way we did it last time here. So again, I'm using uh, Bootstrap to do the forms instead of doing the CSS myself, and I'm using the classes that they define in here. So if you want to follow along and have the Bootstrap forms page open you can have a look and see what I'm doing and I'll consult this from time to time. Okay so let's let's make our code look like this. So here's what my code looks like right now and I've got all these th first three controls and I want to put them all into a row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Bootstrap I'm going to say that um, I have a row and it's going to create a div uh, or I'll put a div in and I'll say that my div starts here and it ends here and pull this over. So I'm going to put all of these things inside of one row and then I have to tell it where the different columns end. So I'm going to say okay this is a column and even more I'm going to say that what's contained within this column is a group of form controls. So I'm going to say I have a form group inside of inside of this and I'll put my div there. I'll create a second div class equals column form group here for the last name and I'll do a third one div class equals column form equal uh, and form group and I'll wrap that around the student ID. So when I save this now, I get something that looks like this. I have a single row that goes all the way across. All of these are in one row and it has divided them up evenly into three for me, which is which is great. This is what I wanted. And I've got a text box for the first name, which is here. OK, so I've specified that I want text and I've specified a name, F name, an ID. Etc. And I've also put in autocomplete information. So as much as I can, I'm going to try and give clues to the browser about which data I'm trying to use here. And I can never remember these. I always have to look them up. So if you go and look up um, the HTML autocomplete attribute on MDN, it has all the values. And you'll be able to find, like if you want the person's first name, you have to use given name, right? Which is what I've done here. Or if you want to use the person's last name, you use family name. So that's what I've done down here. I've said autocomplete equals family name. And um, I'm giving clues. So if the browser supports or has information for this user, 
it, it, it can automatically fill it in. So it's a nice it's a nice feature when you're when you're building a form. Try and have empathy for the user and think about how can I make it easier and less work for them to enter this. Okay, so we need to do a student ID. So let's go over there. I've I've left it blank here. So let's go through the process of putting in the student ID. So I have a label already set up for the student ID. And so that means I need an input control with an ID that is going to uh, match up with this. So I'm going to say equals student ID. Because this I'm using bootstrap, I'm going to say that this is a form control. And I'm going to say that the name of the data in my form, I'll just do it the same as the ID. And I'm going to specify a type. So when I do the type, I could say, well, you know what, this is a number, this is a student number. So I'll put in a number. But the problem is, you know, that's fine if I'm doing a number like this. But some people have a number that starts with zero, like this, and it's going to mess things up. So what I'm going to do, or what if, you know, maybe maybe they enter their number like this, right? So I want to be careful about, I don't want to be too restrictive if I don't need to be. So I'm just going to say, let's do text. And later on, I'll show you a way that we could, we could deal with, um, you know, what type this is and be able to validate it. So I'm setting my tab index one, two, this will be three. And I'm gonna close that off and I'll save it. And if I go back to my form, I now have first name, last name and student ID, which is great. Okay, I've left a few other pieces empty here just so I could show you how I'm gonna make my decision about which form controls to use. So the next thing I need to do is I need to do the email. So I'm gonna go down and focus on that. So I've got a spot here where the email address should go. So let's do the email address. Input control, ID equals email. And again, for Bootstrap, this is a form control. Name is equal to email. I could use a different name and a different ID, but I'm just gonna leave them the same to keep my sanity as I try and do this. Autocomplete. If we go over here and take a look, we, we see that email is one of the options, the user's email address. So let's just use that. So I'm going to say autocomplete equals email. Type equals text. What do you think? Well, when you're choosing your types, what I want you to do is I want you to always ask yourself, is there a more specific input type that I could choose? Again, I'm on the documentation this time for the input element. And if you go looking at all the types, there's all different types for things like dates. This is what we want right here, email. So this is a field that looks like text, but it's gonna have some extra validation on it to make sure that what the person enters is a valid email. So they're gonna be forced to enter an email and it's less code that I have to write. So I'm gonna say email here instead of using uh, the text type. Uh, tab index is equal to four. Close it off, save it, and that's good. We have an email address. Let's do a phone number. Same thing for phone number. I have an input element, ID equals phone. I'm going to have to set the class equal to form control. Name equals phone. Autocomplete equals, and there's a whole bunch of these there. With the telephone number, you can use tell, or you can break it down into specific pieces. Like if you wanted just the area code, or, you know, I'm just, I want the whole phone number. So I'm just going to say tell. Type equals, again, we could put text, but because this is a phone number, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want the user to enter a telephone number. Now, telephone numbers are fiendishly difficult to validate. In fact, they're impossible to validate because there's so many weird different types of phone numbers all around the world. And so really the best we can do here is we're giving a hint to the browser that this is gonna be a telephone number on a mobile 
browser, what it would do is it would pop up a different keyboard. So you would just get a number pad and it makes it easier to enter a telephone number. So in this case, it's not really about validating it. It's about making sure that um, the user has what they need in order to enter it properly. So we type in, we say this is going to be a telephone number. Tab index is going to be equal to five. Save that. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, what's next? Uh, we've got a city and we've got a province. So let's say we're building something for Canada and this is not always a, a safe thing to do, uh, but let's say we are gonna limit the user or we're gonna try and aid the user when they're entering in the list of, of provinces. With city, we really don't wanna do this. So if you take a look at what we've done for city, we've specified that this is gonna be text. So we're gonna let the user enter the text freehand because there's too many cities in Canada. I'm not gonna type them all out for them. However, I could do something interesting for the province. So if you think about the provinces in Canada, there, there aren't that many. And um, when our user is going to enter those provinces, we wanna make sure that they do so in the correct way. So imagine this, like somebody's gonna, if we say, tell me what your province is, somebody's gonna write ON, somebody else is gonna write Ontario, someone's gonna write ONT, ONT, someone's gonna uh, spell it wrong. Um, we're gonna get all kinds of different ways that this is gonna be entered. And it's gonna be really problematic for our data because our data is gonna be inconsistent. So what I wanna do is I wanna limit what the user can enter and I'm gonna give them a hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a control that already says these are the possible values that you can put in. So I've already typed this out. I won't make you <laughs> sit and watch me type it. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in a select. So I have a select for the province and I have all of the options that are possible and I go through them, they're in alphabetical order. And I've also selected one of the options for the user. So I've automatically selected Ontario. Let's say that most of your users are in Ontario and you're trying to help them. This again, may or may not be the right choice because anyone who's not in Ontario is gonna have to go and change it. But if you wanna make sure that it gets, you know, you have, you have one of the options chosen, this is how I would do it. So when I save this, I now have a nice drop down menu with all of the options here. The user can't possibly enter it incorrectly. The data is going to match exactly the way that I want it to come in, which is great. So I have city, I have province, I have postal code. The uh, next thing, second last thing I need to do is I need to allow them to enter in a URL. Okay, so let's go down and do that. We have a place where the URL should go. So I'm gonna say input ID equals URL. And let's say that um, class equals form control uh, autocomplete. In this case, I'm gonna turn autocomplete off because I really can't autocomplete it. Let's say that the user is gonna put up um, some web page from within Seneca that they want to talk about, uh, maybe a course or something like that. And so there's no way for me, for the browser to know what it is they should fill in. So I'm just going to say, don't bother doing it at all. Type equals text. What do you think? Well, again, we go back to our list of types and we start scrolling through and we look at them. What all do we have in here? There's telephone. And down here, a field for entering a URL. It looks like a regular text input, but it has extra validation parameters. Uh, so, and it's gonna change the keyboard for us if we specify that this is URL. So let's do that. Let's say that the type of this is going to be a URL, tab index equals 10. Whoops, wrong window. Okay, good, so now we have a place for our URL to go. And the last thing I wanna do is I wanna do this appointment time. So I wanna have a label, and then I wanna have these radio buttons that go across here. So when you're designing something like this, you have to think about, again, how you want the user to do it. So one thing that you might think to do is you might say something like, okay, I'm gonna put check boxes. So I'll have a check box for morning, 
a checkbox for afternoon and a checkbox for evening. And the problem, the problem with this, if you give the user the ability to check more than one, then they're going to. So you're going to have some people are going to check more than one of these things, and that's not what we want. So if we make it a radio button, the radio buttons, only one of them can be selected at a time. So this is a better, this is a better mechanism for us. This is what we want to do. If you take a look at the, the bootstrap documentation and you look up radio buttons, um, you'll see that radio buttons are usually stacked vertically like this, but you can also do them in line and they can either be check boxes like this, right? Where you can select more than one or they can be ra a radio button where you have to pick only one of the list. So this is what we wanna be able to use right here, this kind of inline, uh, inline type. There's a couple of other interesting things about the way that these work. The, the way that we are going to do this, let me get rid of this highlighting, we're going to give the exact same name to every one of our options. So you can see how they have inline radio options, inline radio options, inline radio options. All of them use the same name, but each one of them, if we go over here, has a different value. So the browser, you think about radio buttons as if it's one control. And what you're going to do is you're just going to specify which one of these uh, which one of these has a particular value, but they all have the same name. Okay, so let me show you how I would code this up. So I have the appointment time here. And what I'm going to do after this label is I'm going to say I have a uh, class equals form check. and uh, form inline inside of this I'm going to do an input control and a label and you could either do the you could put the label first and then the input control but I'm going to put the control first and the label afterwards so I'm going to say I have an input control input control, I'm going to say the class is equal to form check, and this is an inline uh, input element. So I'm going to say form check input, and it goes inside of this inline div that's above it. I'm going to say that the type is equal to radio button. Name is equal to appointment uh, let's just do a, let's just do that APPT and I'm going to say that the value is equal to um, morning like so and I'm by by default I'm going to say that this one is checked so then I'm going to do my label and I have to say four equals so I need an ID so let's go ID equals APPT morning morning like that so if I save this I'm gonna get um, what have I forgot to do oh I forgot to put the class on the label I have to say that this is a uh, form check label so it's got to be styled slightly see how it's not the baseline is wrong, like it's up too high. So I save this and it should, yeah, it'll move it back. Okay, that's good. Uh, the only thing I don't like is I don't like how tight this is. So what I want to do is I want to throw a little bit of margin on the right of the appointment time and Bootstrap has some handy utility classes that I can use. So on my label up here, I'm going to say class equals margin on the right. And I could do, let's say, let's say three, or if that's too much, you could do two and it'll, there you go. So it pushes it over just a little bit. And, okay, so let's, this is a, a bad habit, but you'll forgive me if I paste this in. And so let's fix this up. So we're gonna have afternoon. Afternoon. This one is not going to be checked. Afternoon and afternoon. And the last one is going to be evening.
that's good. So now we've got morning, afternoon, and evening. Perfect. Um, okay, so I'm going to pause this here. And when we come back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on getting all of the validation for this in place. Because right now, people can enter anything they want, and we're not really checking anything. We're not specifying what's required, what's optional. We don't have any error messages. We don't have any additional checks. So we need to figure out those pieces. So that's the next thing that we'll work on together.